Welcome to the 2023 Cabin Fever Challenge Awards video. Welcome to the results for the 2023 Cabin Fever Challenge. This is Division 1, the Vintage Auto Loaders. I'm Distract Teacher, Division 1 leader. Uh, we had 13 entrants this year and a really good showing of different firearms. Uh, it seemed this year the M1 style actions were very popular, as well as the SKS, which is usually a top runner. Uh, we had some fantastic, fantastic runs from people and some awesome videos. So let me run you through the results. Starting out the running this year, we have Grand Guy 2553 in 13th place. He was using a US Rifle M1. He had three hits in 112 seconds for a score of 13.4. Nice shooting and welcome to the competition. In 12th place, we had returning again this year, Charles Prescott. He was using a Tula SKS with four hits in 111 seconds for a score of 18.0. In 11th place, we had Dan Rudy using a Soviet SKS. Four hits in 89 seconds for a score of 22.4 points. In 10th place was yours truly Distract Teach with what I like to call the Kami Stopper 3000, also known as the M1A. I had eight hits in 120 seconds for a final score of 33 and one third points. In ninth place, rifle chair shows us that that's not a rifle, it's a rifle with his Breda M1. He had seven hits in 97 seconds for 36.1 points. In eighth place, we had AKM 295 with a strong run on his M1 carbine. He had eight hits in 85 seconds for a score of 47.1. In seventh place, we had Sean Elliott with his Soviet SKS. He had 10 hits in 84 seconds for a score of 59 and a half points. In sixth place, we had Nick Wiesman. He was firing a US M1. He had 13 hits in 87 seconds for 74.7 points. Nice shooting, Nick. In fifth place, results. we had Oragir using a Century Arms AKM. He had nine hits in 58 seconds for a score of 77.6 points. In fourth place, we had Arloxen using a Rifle M1. He had 12 hits in 73 seconds for a score of 82.2 .2 points. In third place, we had Hang In There Cat using a Chinese Type 56. They must have done something right with these rifles, and he must have done something right with his technique. He had 14 hits in 85 seconds for a final score of 82.4 points. This brings us up to our final two, but before I get to those final two, I want to give an honorable mention to Mr. Flinch Faster. He had a run with his M1 carbine that unfortunately we had to disqualify because of video continuity issues. Uh, we could not accurately time his run, so he was a really great sport about that. Thank you so much for your understanding, and we are looking forward to seeing you next year. It's absolutely blows me away at over 80 years old that you are able to trek all the way to a remote firing range with all the multiple issues that you were struggling with as far as rifle function and ammunition and still get an entry in. Thank you for your submission. That brings us on to our top two, our finalists. Uh, this was a very, very tough call. Me and Rifle Chair had multiple conversations about it so that we could figure out how to best calculate and give a fair scoring and a fair ranking here. Both of these contestants 
submitted scores with the exact same number of hits and the exact same amount of time. Uh, so what we ended up having to do is I manually retimed each video down to the nearest thousandth of a second, which at that point, you're talking that's reaction time, can even have a factor in that. So what I did is I timed each of them 20 times and then calculated an average for each. And that's how we came up with these final numbers. Uh, first place this year for Division One was won by three hundredths of a second. Right, That's .031 of a second. Absolutely incredible. Two very different rifles, two very different locations. Uh, really, really close running. So without further ado, here are your top two. In second place... We have DMP in BC shooting a Chinese SKS. He had 12 hits in 72.071 seconds. And his final score was 83.251 points. Like I said, this is a really close score, folks. This one was almost a toss-up. Uh, excellent shooting. Very nicely produced video. So congratulations to you second place this year that brings us to first place a very unique entry i've never actually seen one of these fired outside of forgotten weapons in first place we have cnr collector he was using a uh, swedish Ljungman ag 42b uh, this was a really cool rifle to watch being fired because it's one of the early direct impingement rifles that there are out there. Uh, the amount of gas that is shooting up out of the top of this action is just incredible. Um, I can't even imagine what it's like to have quick follow-up shots. Really cool rifle, really great entry. His score was 12 hits in 72.04 seconds for a final score of 83.287 points. Right, like I said, this was won by three hundredths of a second. Absolutely incredible, and what a coincidence. Congratulations, CNR Collector. Uh, this also happens to be his first year as a uh, division leader. So, uh, we you know, thank you for your contribution. Uh, just really great entries, and a couple of blistering runs here. Very nicely done. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Origear and we're going to be going over the results for Division 2 of Cabin Fever Challenge 2023. Uh, so we had 16 people competing this year, myself included, and along with a couple other individuals representing the cadre for Cabin Fever Challenge. And uh, we did see quite a few different types of firearms as we typically do here in uh, Division 2. The vast majority of people ran AR-15s in 5.56 five, or Two, two, three. Um, but we did see some really interesting guns. We had two people competing with nine millimeters. We had a couple people competing with 308s and then one person competing, uh, or actually two, myself included, uh, in 762 by 39. And I want to pay particular note to the other person who was running 762 by 39 in this competition who came in last place, um, but I think had the right attitude and uh, was very entertaining to watch. Uh, so coming in at 16th place, we had Dimitri, uh, who submitted from uh, Latvia, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the first submission from Latvia that we've actually had in Cabin Fever Challenge um, history. Um, he represented the YouTube channel Run and Gun, and he was running a sporterized um, uh, SKS rifle, and he came in with only two hits in 79 seconds for a score of 12.7, but I think he had one of the best attitudes of any of the people that I saw competing in this challenge. And I think he perfectly summed up what Cabin Fever Challenge is and what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to let him say it in his own words. I'm happy with my results. This challenge is not about competing with others. It's about competing with yourself, with your skills. So I'm glad I have 12. Next year, I'm definitely going to compete again. And I'm going to beat my score of 12. 
And one of the other things I have to specifically give him a shout out for is uh, we all know how hard it is to be speaking in your non-native language, but he was also doing math in his non-native language. And math is hard enough to do in English for me. I cannot imagine having to do that in any of the other languages that I'm even remotely familiar with. Uh, so big shout out to Dimitri for being able to be a really good sport, still submit his score, and be part of this larger community of people competing in Cabin Fever Challenge. Do you have a calculator? Uh, moving up from there, we had a couple guys who competed with the same rifle, um, and they both came in um, in 15th and 13th place. Um, but it, again, one of the other things I appreciate too is whenever people are able to work through malfunctions that they have during their course of fire, uh, it's really easy for us to just call timeout when things aren't going our way and just start over from scratch. These guys were able to work through their malfunctions and take it all the way through to the end. Uh, in there, we also had Eunice at number 14. He's one of the match directors over from Finland. He was running probably, if I had to guess, the heaviest rifle of Division 2, so really running it in hard mode. Uh, he was dealing with plenty of snow, as was Dimitri. It was even snowing for him. Um, but running a super heavy, uh, it was an Oberland Arms OA-10, basically an AR-10 style rifle that uses HKG-3 mags, so really interesting. But that thing looked like a beast, and I cannot imagine having to hold that thing up and support that weight. Um, but he, he ran it really well, actually did pretty decent on hits and time, uh, bringing in at 14th place. We also had another person from Finland, uh, Mike9975. He was running a Ruger PC carbine in 9mm. One of the other cool things for him was seeing the camera angles that he was able to get. It's always interesting seeing how people are able to record their runs. So getting that kind of first person perspective, looking down the red dot as he was doing the course of fire was pretty cool. Um, coming in at number 11, we have someone from the USA, John, running a Springfield M1A with an optic, with that optic putting it into Division 2. So the other individual here running a battle rifle cartridge in 308. He came in again at number 11 with 66.8 for his score. Uh, beautiful surroundings when he was doing that too, by the way. Um, then we had me in at number 10. Uh, I was running a modernized AKM rifle. Had a lot of fun with it. It was my first time putting rounds through that other than getting it zeroed. Uh, so a little bit of a learning curve there uh, with that rifle, but um, still overall happy with the score, uh, bring, putting me at number 10. At number nine, we had our first submission from Rumble, which was pretty interesting as many of the other match directors know, I'm sure, and many other content creators who submit for this competition know. Uh, YouTube is not the most friendly place in the world to firearms content. Uh, so this was the first time we had someone from one of those third party websites submitting. Um, so uh, Kurhi from the Every Citizen a Soldier channel running an AR-10 came in at number nine. At number eight, we had Distract Teach, one of the other moderators for uh, Kevin Fever Challenge. He was running one of his custom AR-15s and came in at number eight with a score of 111.9. Coming in from Finland again, bouncing back and forth between the U.S. and Finland mostly here, we had Finnish Rifleman. He was running a Colt AR-15, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, this was one of my favorite setups that I saw for AR-15s. Kind of an SPR style configuration. It was fully camoed out with some, um, oh, what do you call that? Stuff draped over the barrel to help uh, break up the outline. I love the martial respect that people in Finland have for firearms. Uh, so that was really cool coming in with a score of 114.8. Coming in at number six from the USA, we have 509 G-Man also running an AR-15. He had a score of 118.1. And with a lot of these guys, we're seeing pretty heavy snow kind of putting my nice dry sunny day to shame when I was doing my cabin fever challenge run. Um, and with the 509 G-Man and a couple of the other ones here we're about to mention, it was really cool seeing, while I believe the Cabin Fever Challenge is something that is you competing against yourself and being a part of a larger community, uh, there were a couple of these guys who all competed together. Uh, yes, Cabin Fever Challenge is you testing against yourself, but it's also cool seeing friends out there competing with each other and also helping to boost each other up and encourage each other through the competition. So 509 G-Man came in again with a score of 118 in number six. Number five, we have AKM295, someone who I know has been following my channel for a while. Uh, so he came in under a minute with a final score of 129.3 with his 15 hits. 
Then we have, uh, I believe it's Arluxen. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. This was one of the other guys competing with 509 G-Man. So he was running a high power configuration AR-15 with a score of 130.8. And number, thir uh, number three, uh, we have Nick uh, Wesseman. Uh, he was also in that group of three individuals running their rifles together. He came in with a final score of 155.6 with his 14 hits in 45 seconds. So pretty dang quick. In second place, we have one of the other moderators here for Kevin Fever Challenge, uh, CNR Collector, Justin over there. Um, he was running his AR-15 and had a blazing speed of 38 seconds with 13 hits to get a score of 171.1. Really, really great shooting and very impressive speed and transitions. And then in first place from Canada, no stranger to the winner's circle, is Giva Bedser. He was running his Tavor X95, also in 9mm. Um, and with his, uh, let's see here, 18 hits, uh, which is the most of anyone in, in Division 2 this year, and a score or, or time of about 48 seconds, he got 189.2. Uh, so... First place goes to Giva Bedser, so congratulations to him. Again, I just want to thank everyone who came out for Division 2 this year. Again, it's really interesting to see what rifles people bring to the table and also the different configurations of the rifles that people bring to the table. Um, and I really uh, want to show appreciation to the people who came in with lower scores, knowing that they probably wouldn't win, um, but still wanted to be a part of the community together anyway. They wanted to put their scores out there for them to test against themselves in the years to come. And I really have a lot of respect for those individuals because I think that's what this is all about. Testing yourself, measuring your skills, looking forward to the future and forming a community of like-minded individuals along the way. So big thanks to everyone who came out for Cabin Fever Challenge this year and good luck in the next years to come. Hi, I'm Justin with the CNR Collector Channel and this is your Division 3 Manual Repeating Awards video. This year we had 21 entries from three countries. Let's take a look at them. And now the top 10. Let's break down the top three runs. In third place is Brent Y from the United States, shooting his 1903 A3 in .30-06. He has smooth bolt operation, keeps stock in his shoulder. He shows a good use of the hasty sling method. He has no time wasted between positions. 
and very quick use of stripper clips. Last round in this run, he had a failure to fire. We timed his run to this round. His run was 101 seconds with 13 hits for a total score of 64.3. In second place, we have Rifle Chair from Canada using his Tika CTR in 308, topped with a CMR Hilux 1 to 4 by 24. He had a consistent rate of fire and bolt speed. His stock was shouldered throughout bolt operation. He had great control of this light rifle in 308. His transitions were no nonsense along with his reloads. His run was complete in 98.2 seconds with 16 hits, a very well centered solid grouping for a total score of 81.5. This year for honorable mention, I've picked someone who was disqualified due to range limitations. This is Gunter from Switzerland. He is firing a Winchester Model 94 and 357. He had to get a little creative with his run and because he was firing through a window on a 50 meter range. The winner of Division 3 Manual Repeating for 2023 is Tutanam from Canada firing a Hawa Mini in 223. This rifle is perfect for this competition. Even with the inconsistent trigger, he was able to put down an excellent group. His stock stayed in his shoulder throughout all bolt movement. He was able to put down a shot every three to four seconds. You could tell that he was very well practiced in his shooting positions. No adjustments were made after initial setup. If you watch his transitions, you'll be able to see his position changes and his reloads at the same time. This was a very fast run coming in at 90 seconds. He scored 16 hits for a total score of 88.9. Tutanam, that was a fantastic run. A very well-deserved first place. And to all the other competitors, thank you for participating. You are the people that keep this thing alive. And uh, I hope to see you guys next year. Welcome to the 2023 Cabin Fever Challenge, Division 4, Single Shot. This category includes trapdoor actions, break actions, Rolling blocks, dropping blocks, tilting blocks, falling blocks, all of the blocks and everything else that you can imagine. We have two entries this year, one from myself to Nam and the other by CNR Collector. In second place, we have Tudnam shooting a Swedish rolling block, chambered an 8x58 rimmed Danish. Originally these rifles were chambered in 12.7x44R, which was a black powder cartridge. But eventually the Swedes adopted an 8mm cartridge using the new fancy smokeless powders. I had a pretty good run except for one little bobble where I dropped the cartridge I intended to shoot, which slowed me down a little bit. But overall I managed to get 14 hits and a respectable 165 seconds for a total score of 42.4. As you can see here, even though it's a single shot, it still manages to get pretty hot. In first place, we have CNR Collector with his super cool Martini Cadet chambered in 310 Cadet. These rifles were manufactured by the Australians, who wanted a miniature version of the Martini Henry to train with. Loading 310 Cadet is very tricky with its healed bullet and takes a lot of research and patience to do properly. But CNR Collector put the work in and has a rifle that's accurate and dialed in correctly. CNR Collector demonstrates a smooth and deliberate run. He manages to get 16 hits and a great time of 144 seconds for a total score of 55.5. That's an all-time high score for this division. Well done CNR Collector! That's it for this year folks. Maybe we'll see a few more shooters looking to challenge themselves in Division 4 next year. Have a good one and I'll see you out on the range. This is Murray and here are the Division 5 entries for 2023.
gonna try this with a match lock. There's one. I'm going to safely put that over there where it's out of the way. For the cabin fever challenge, I want to do something just a little different, and that is to reenact the 1980s new muzzleloader shooter. Come on, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Get that thing loaded up. That's pretty Ooh, Looks like you stole that bag from your wife, looks to me like. 601, final shot. 601. Catch ball, ball, or it will not Sing fire at all. What's this? I challenge Brother Rick to the cabin fever challenge. Can you do it, son? Now, for them of you all out there who don't know the difference, this is a real black powder gun. See this thing right here? This is a piece of flint. This is a rock. This is what makes spark. And them little <laughs> cappy things that them playboys back here had. Oh, oh I just don't know about We're trying them. to be from the 80s. Cappy guns, huh? You want to be from the 1780s. You know, I shot a cap gun when I was six years old. Oh, oh he broke it. Oh! <laughs> nope, it did. This is what I get for talking trash. <laughs> I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Today we're doing the cabin fever challenge. <laughs> this is high speed, low drag muzzleloader shooting. Hello, welcome to Bloke and Range for another participation in the Cabin Fever Challenge. This time it's going to be Division 6, I believe. No, 5. Anyway. Muzzle loader. Muzzle loader division. Loading from the previously used fire position was what I had intended to do. This scheme proved to be most expedient. Rather than try to roll onto my back for the last load, itself a well-documented historical technique, I figured that trying to do so would result in a hot mess of rawhide and wood at my feet. And as entertaining as that might have been, simply readopting the kneeling was the way to go. And the highest score goes to our returning champion, Bill, from the United States. This year, Bill was using an 1853-58 caliber Enfield musket. He managed to get four hits on target in a blazing fast time of 98 seconds. 
giving him a score of 20.4. So it's great to see you make it out once again, Bill. And as always, fantastic shooting. Unfortunately, Bill did have some microphone issues. So as you can see here in the footage we have, we do not have audio. But no matter, we were able to still pull the score from that. Overall, 2023 was a great year for Division 5 in the Cabin Fever Challenge. Uh, I was very happy to see a lot of smooth bore uh, muzzleloaders make it out this year. It definitely helps to justify that 8 inch circle at 50 meters. That was previously starting to be questioned. Um, and then this year was particularly special too because for the first time in Cabin Fever Challenge history, you saw that we received a couple matchlock entries, which is very neat to see. So I'd like to thank everybody for participating, and I definitely look forward to seeing your entries next year. Until then, take care. And this crossbow lever provides a whole new challenge for shooting from the front. Welcome to Davison 6 22 Rimfire Awards for Cabin Fever Challenge 2023. This year, we received a whopping 17 submissions for the 22 Rimfire category. And uh, as a Davison host, I will be going through all of your submissions. So let's have a look.
already missed twice. Damn it. Fifty five seconds. Seventeen. Seventeen. Let's see one, two, three. Oh, here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 14, 16, oh, there's the third one, 17. Yeah, 17. Get those three holes. 17 and 55 seconds. And 18, 19, 20. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. I want to see 17 hits in 56 seconds. One miss. What's that? One miss. We'll see. Cool. Thanks, guys. How fast? I don't know. I forgot to look and see when you started shooting. I was just watching you make sure I had you in front. Two, Two misses. misses. Suck it, monkey. Oh, yes. Know. It's still not that. three misses. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know how long it was. Hopefully you were. Oh, we forgot to bring a target. I'll just bring bring the whole thing. Ah, yeah, screw it, just leave it. I'll bring a target out. Okay. And uh yeah, so what I, I may put in the magazines backwards. Yes, because <laughs> you can't tell. Um, really. So you actually have the right to try this as many times as you want and submit your best one. We are going to attempt to do it in a one, one go. each because yep. we feel that that's in the spirit of the competition. If we get a jam, depending on what the jam is, <laughs> maybe we might ha take a mulligan. See, the aim is not to know. take a mulligan. <laughs> um, yeah, so All right. this is freezing cold, hence the Michael Jackson one glove thing. And I'm going first because it's my gat. So, so do you want to hold the second mag and, and pass it to me? Set up my, my ammo. Your ammo dispensary. dispensary. Sorry, this is literally the best angle we could get <laughs> without being able to put the camera outside because it's going to get wet. Uh, ammo is RWS pistol match, which is excellent stuff. Uh, check that the timer is going to go. All right. So when we're ready, yep. press that press start. start button. Yep. So, <laughs> and you're going to need to shuffle out. Up. You right. see his head bobbing up and down here. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to put my hand down so that you can grab it. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Actually, I'll, I'll start balls this. Balls up the fitting. All right. Ready? Ready.
and we spent. So that was yep. clear. 49.01 with the first shot at 496. So we'll do the maths on that later and put it on the screen. The stoppage there was me forgetting to cock it. So not getting a mulligan for that. That is my fault entirely. Own it. You shot it, you earned it. They are not all in. It is not 20. Oh, I, no, it's not 20. Ah. Oh, no. Now that's out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 in whatever time that ends up being. So that's under, yeah. 40, under 40 seconds. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's adequate. We shall uh, see. It uh, hits, on pay, hits on target times 5 divided by time in seconds times 100. We'll put down below because we're engineers and we can't do that. No, we haven't got a magic black box. No. <laughs> okay, so let us swap over and uh, let Chad Yep. My name is Rightful Chair. I am the event official for the 2023 Cabin Fever Challenge. I'd like to welcome all 89 com competitors from across the United States, Canada, Finland, Switzerland, Latvia, and the Czech Republic. 89 competitors in 2023. Overall highest scores from the 2014 to 2023, that's nine years of shooting. Um, next year will be our 10th annual competition 2024, which is hard to believe, really is. But for Division 1, these are the overall highest scores since 2014 to 2023, total of nine years. These are our, still our top shooters by division. Division 1 uh, from the United States is Viking R. This is from 2021, shooting a CSA VZ58 with a score of 112.64 um, points. Division 2 Modern Unlimited from Canada is Java Betzer, uh, running a Tavor X95 and 9mm Luger. This, this year in 2023 for a score of 189.2, which is a brand new record for this year for that division. So well done, sir. Division three, manual repeating rifles from Canada, rifle chair, <laughs> shooting a tick at CTR in 308. This is from 2019, um, ran a total score of 89.5. That is still remains to be the, the overall highest score for division three. However, uh, this year, um, my brother beat me yeah, some of you may have known this already, but Tudnam is my younger brother, and he beat me. Uh, we got the same number of hits, but he did it in less time. So well done, Tudnam. I'll get you next year. Division four single shots uh, from the United States. This is a brand new record. Uh, CNR collector running a Martini 310 Cadet with a total score of 55.5. Very very good shooting, and a really super cool and interesting rifle. I'd love to have one for myself. Speaking of Division 4, there are only two competitors this year. I'm interested in your feedback as to why it is that there are only two competitors. I know we're all busy. I know I know it's, it's difficult to do. Is it just because Division 4 isn't as popular? We always seem to have the fewest number of competitors into that to enter that division. Um, let me know what you think down below. Division 5, muzzleloaders. We have a new record for 2023 by Bill K, running an 1853 Enfield and 58 caliber, uh, who has just unseated British muzzleloaders from the all-time high score for Division 5 muzzleloaders, with a total score of 20.4. That's a new record. And lastly, Division 6, our newest division, 22 Rimfire. Uh, running a, a Remington 597 3M TA3. Uh, this is going back to 2022. Remains the overall highest score. Um, 3M TA3 from Canada with a total score of 202.4. Now, one of the benefits of running a roll of musketry since we've been doing this, you know, nine years, is that we start to build a, data, a significant database 
of what the kind of performance patterns and trends uh, some of these rifles some of these shooters can can achieve and so uh, because the data is open source you can run the data and look at the data anytime you want you can run your own kind of uh, filters and so on to see kind of what the information tells you and not not only can you query which rifle systems are within the winner circle but you can also examine the performance of say let's say which, what are the uh, what are the best say military surplus world war ii military surplus firearms and what are each of those rifles doing i mean how are they performing so uh you know i i did it I, and i'll post it on the facebook group so you can see it so i ran the performance trends for all of the top five or top ten best scores and I put them on to the um, and I put them into a chart so you can see well, these are the rifles that are performing the best and you may be surprised by the results and there's always this uh, there's always this exchange that Leon fields are better than spring 1903 Springfields and 98 K's are always better than Mosin and Gantz well you might be surprised by what the data says um, in any case, the uh, the role of musketry, musketry has been uploaded, and you can re review the data at any time, in your own time, whenever you would like. Uh, environmentals this year, it was a tough year, and there was a lot of the submissions. I watched you guys shooting. Uh, I watched everybody's submissions, and it was a tough year for many of you. You braved some rather difficult elements, uh, blizzards, sideways snow, um, almost whiteout conditions to the point where you had, had difficulty seeing the target. I had there were shooters that were out and it was colder than minus 30 degrees Celsius. So we're talking like Arctic like conditions while shooting your rifles. That's difficult on the shooter. It's difficult on the ammunition. It's difficult on the rifles. So it's interesting to see those rifles shooting in those environmentals or those conditions because normally you would expect oh that that rifle's going to jam up. So people that know how to run those rifles, they don't lubricate them. They do, they run them dry because you, you're trying to because oil and grease will actually freeze into a solid at some point. So they get to be pretty cold. Anyway, shooting in Arctic-like conditions is not easy. People have to dress and, like the Michelin Man, and uh, in order to uh, stop your stop your fingers from freezing solid, it's not easy, right? So this is the cabin fever challenge. Um, so all the, well done to all of you. Really, really impressive. And, uh, you know, being sandblasted by hail or, you know, snow blasting across the surface of the, uh, of the ice, it's, of the snow is it's absolutely uh, unbelievable. Three more points to make, and then we'll make this uh, the end of the, of the competition video. Um, some division leaders are, um, have been doing this for a long time, and the you know, it's, it, it, it is a relatively large uh, job to, to, to tally all of the results, analyze the results, double check the numbers, um, you know, the scores, review the footage. You know, it's, it, it is a little bit time consuming. Some of them are getting a little bit tired. They've been doing it for a long time now. And I totally get that. And so if any of you out there are, are interested in jumping on board the team and becoming one of our um, division leaders, contact us let us know cfc divisions at gmail gmail.com cfc divisions at gmail.com and uh, maybe think about joining our team our team we have a great system we have uh, a great rapport good communication and it's it's a tight it's a tight setup it works really well and they're a great bunch of guys um yeah so some of them would like to take a break and i totally get that I, sometimes i would like to like to take a break too but uh, second number, uh, the second point here is that uh, a, a lot of con competitors um, are suffering from what we know widely here in Canada as government overreach, wherein um, the government has essentially made some of your property prohibited. You're not allowed to go out and use it anymore. So, I mean, essentially, Division 2 is almost dominated now by the United States of America and Finland because Canadians aren't allowed to use the same firearms that they are. That they're using so I mean there's that right so I mean having to deal with um, you know uh, governments that uh, think that civilians shouldn't own firearms and so they conflate uh, gun control with crime control and they're not the same thing they're not tr they're not they want gun control they're not, not not too necessarily interested in crime control so you gotta ask yourself why 
So one of the reasons that the ca Cabin Fever Challenge exists is so that people can see what gun, what gun, gun, gun owners do. And they go out and they compete, they're hunters and so on. So what we're doing is we're, we're showing people who we are. We're not the bad guys here. We're not the people shooting up, you know, people in downtown Toronto, for example, or in downtown Chicago. We're not those people. So we're exposing the world to who competitors are, who gun, gun owners really are, lawful citizens. And so getting that kind of exposure is really important. And the Cabin Fever Challenge helps to achieve that. And the last, the last point I'd like to make before we close for this year is what is a mulligan? We heard bloke on the range uh, mention it. And, uh, and what is a mulligan? So I had to look it up because I wanted to make sure I got the definition correct. No mulligans. So a mulligan is a second chance to perform an action, usually after the first chance went wrong through bad luck or blunder. So yeah, sometimes you got to warm up once, twice, th three times maybe, um, and then you shoot the match. However, what I've discovered though is that sometimes it's your first run that is the best. <laughs> so uh, no do-overs. That's that's something that I have eventually started to do myself. No mull no mulligans. It's the first one, or and that's it. I'm not going to sit there and, and run it over and over and over again. This is me when I'm cold. This is me when I'm you know maybe do a little bit of stretching, kind of stuff like that beforehand, but that's the raw me out there shooting. So I'm, I'm not doing it over and over again and picking the best of the bunch. Um, but that's just how I roll. You guys can do it whichever way you want. But that's what no mulligans means. Okay. Hope you guys are doing great. Thank you for entering the competition. And we'll see you guys again next year. Cheers, and as always, make belief up.